السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته جود افتر نون اتس جود تو ميت افتر ذا لانش اند اي هوب اي ويل هاف ا انترستينج برزنتيشن از ديليشس از ذا لانش وي هاف جاست ناو ان ذا وورد جنرالي وي هير ماني كويشنز اوفر اند اوفر اجين وي اوفر يوز ذوس كويشنز اند سام تايمز وي اوفر اولسو يوز ذا انسرز وي ار جيفن تو اس A good friend of mine who is a brain sci uh, scientist always tell me to find new questions. Start asking new questions for you to find the unused answer somewhere. That is very good for you because it makes you curious. It makes you interesting. It makes you very positive and energetic. And I always correlate to that one to the kids that we are all here for and trying to give them a better education. Kids always do things interesting they are always happy and smiley and they always do things for the first time which brings the topic of and ask questions important to them and they will always remember and that's why always kids have childhood memories some of us don't when we grow older so in the sense of that i work for an organization is also as young as kids we are only six years old we are called the knowledge and human development authority of dubai and for short i'll just call it khda And I think we have an interesting story, and we use the new road that I would like to take a pit stop at it and try to evaluate in your perspective where is that road leading us to. In 2007, we were established by the government of Dubai and mainly to look after the private education. For those who knows Dubai knew back then the growth that we were witnessing, 12% of the population growth. And most of this growth come from the non-nationals who are choosing to come and work in Dubai. The government of Dubai looked at it and said, where is this private education is going? We need to understand it to better develop it and work with it. So when we started in 2007, we looked at it and we seen this picture. We found ourselves in the road, as you see in this picture, is a bit, nobody is with you on that road. The reason why we said that, because when we started looking at the sector in 2007, this is what we realized. As a small sector, and this is a small road, we have only 225,000 students, out of which 88% of them do not go to public education, but goes to private education. 88% of the system is a private education. So you think because you have 90% expat, and that's the reason, which is not true. Because we also find out the second question, how many of our nationals do go to private education and public education? Public education for free, private education is not. But we find out 57%, more than half, opts for private education and pay for it. We also find out out of the private education, in a small system of 225,000, we have 15 different curriculums, from the American to the British to the IB, to the regional, to the Irani, Pakistani, Indian, Australian, Japanese, Filipinos, and you name it, from every population that was represented. But we also found out that out of the private system, there are schools that charge $300 a year, and there are those schools who charge $30,000 a year. So all of the data that we focused on the first year of gathering and warehousing made us feel this way. We are on a road that it's very hard to compare. There is no signage or manual for improving this system. It's a largely private education system. So we move to the next slide. And we said, well, we want to be in this road. How can we go to this road? We realize immediately that having this data, which are just numbers and quantitative data, we need to start populating it and have qualitative data with it. So we started in 2007 participating in TIMS and later on in PISA and now in the journey of the last six years we managed to have two cycles of each. Parallel to doing so we have entered the system into an inspection system in Dubai for the first time. We introduced an international system by where all the schools in Dubai get inspected against made universal six criteria, seven now, and then we try to see how those schools are ranked and rated in comparison to that one. So for the last five years, we've been doing that, and we publish this result out there. Because this is one of the issues that you find with quality assurance. You, you or you do not publish the results. 
in year one of our inspection system, we strongly believed that, as a friend of mine says, the sun is the most powerful natural disinfectant of any system. You put it out there, and nothing wrong can go. So we started doing that, and we've been publishing the results for the last five years. Now, as a result of this, what we found out, unlike any other roads, that we did not do curriculum development in the last five years. We did not do any teacher development ourselves. We did not do any infrastructure development. We didn't do any IT system. We, as a body that regulate education, did not do any of the things that you see elsewhere. In return, what we have done is we hold the system accountable. This system makes four billion dirham, which is about 1.3 billion dollar annually. Parents are buying the service. The role of the government in regulating is to make sure the system is accountable for the parents. That was number one. The second thing, when that happened, and after we overcome the issue is who's good and who's not good, who's outstanding, and which criteria, and could it be it, we actually found out that you can, there are so many myths about being expensive and being a quality, which is not true. One can lead to the other. As a result of that, what we have found out is by having the system so accountable, we find an incentivization from within the system. And this is where my last slide is. What happened as a result of accountability in the system? We find an incentivization. The schools themselves start working with each other. We put the information in the public domain so the parents can read. But the first people who jumped in on this information are the schools themselves. They want to know how good looks like and why is that school is good. So for the last year, we have been having a platform for the schools called What Works. Very simple principle based on the appreciative inquiry. Let's ask what's working and let's make more of it. There is no perfect system. But if you focus on the positives of any system, you will make the negative part negligence. And that's the whole idea of appreciative inquiry. We took that from corporations, installed it in the system, and we said the school, ask what's working and let's make more of it. So what works is a platform happens about every six weeks between the schools. We help organizing, but they're using the data that we have been gathering from inspection, and the school finding out what is the best way. I'll give you an example. We have two schools. One happens to be an Indian, mainly for Indian students, for Indian teachers, and one which is mainly for most of the Arabs and the nationals. When we inspect, we tell the Indian school, you should do better in Arabic. But the school has been telling us, it's very hard to find an Arabic teacher to work in that system. We look at the Arabic school and said, you got to do better in English and, and, and IT. And they said, it's very hard to hire a native English speaker. But as a result of coming what works, those two principals talk to each other. I said, I will give you my teachers. Can you give me yours? They started working. The next year, they are doing better in Arabic, and they are doing better in English. They found the solutions for their structural problem from outside the system by just having them because they create a, an incentivization mechanism for them. So what we have done over the last five years, not using the engineering approach you always see, which is a curriculum development, teacher training. What we've done is we install the road never travel on the incentivization and accountability. Yes, it is a lonely road for some time, but after that, it looks greener, it looks nicer. But this road is very sustainable because here you put the tools, you instrumentalize the tool for the data, the quantitative and the qualitative, and you have the system to be incentivized to improve itself. And this was the most important part of us. That's something you do not find in highly centralized system. For this road to be traveled and to use incentivization and accountability, you'll have to have the diversity in 15 different nationality and 15 different curriculums, but you also have to have the autonomy within the system. I will end with a very short story. Is once upon a time, this guy was walking down the road. He did not pay attention. He fell in a ditch and he shouted a lot for somebody to help him get out of the ditch. A doctor passed by wearing a coat and looked down, and after looking down, he just wrote something in, threw the paper down at the guy in the ditch. And the guy looked at it and said, 
I need to get out of the ditch, and then I can go to the pharmacy. I'm still in the ditch. The doctor looks back and said, I'm a doctor. This is the only thing I can do. Later on, another guy passed by, and he was wearing a religion clothes. And he looked at and he raised his hand to the sky and said, may God bless your soul and rest. And the guy looked at, I'm not dying yet. I need to get out. After that, another guy passed by, which this guy called him by his name and called him Jack. He said, Jack, I'm failing. Can you help me out? Jack did not write something down and raised his hand. Jack took his coats off and his boots and jumped in the same ditch. His friend said, what are you doing? And he said, you asked me to help you, and I'm here to do so. And the guy surprisingly said, how can you do so? We are both stuck here. He said, that's what you think. But last week, I fell in the same ditch, and I only know how to help you from here, not from top there. And that, for us, what works. Thank you very much.